Hi, um, how are you doing? Have you been able to uh, get a lot of this, uh, your reading homework done? Um, if you have any questions, you can call me um, or else I'm sure Mrs. Jacobs or Mrs. Losek will definitely be there to help you. Mrs. Losek, I know for a fact, is very good at um, uh, reading recovery and uh, being able to help you with this. She helps me whenever I have a question. Um, and she always does it with such a smile. She's a good person. Um, but for your ses session eight homework, they want you to use a quest from your story to help develop a theme. Um, I know we haven't done this before in Mrs. Morzinski's class. Um, and there's usually on the back of your sheet, it talks about an internal and external um, struggles. Uh, or quests, and the externals are what are some obvious physical um, problems that the are obstacles that the uh, character has to overcome. Internal quests are where where it's inside the person. Like with I did the internal quest for um, Harry, and I honestly felt that a lot of his internal struggles. And this is what I pretty much drew up. This is all that you really have to do for this part. part. Um, and basically what I did is that his internal quest, um, things that are inside him that gets in his way. One of the big thing, and it was really quite obvious, he had no idea that he was a wizard. Um, so he had to overcome that or find out about himself. And he's in the process of finding out what he's actually capable of. You know, like when the first time that he uh, had the broomstick and he went flying, he realized, wow, this is something he's good at. And it's something that came so easily to him. He didn't even have to try. So that's an in internal part of his internal quest is finding himself, figuring out what he is. I mean, because you've got to remember, he didn't know it didn't know who his parents were. He was never loved um, or not really. Um, he was treated as, like I said earlier, like Cinderella, like he was a uh, servant. Um, and, you know, so that's a lot of his internal things is what he's trying to overcome inside. His nerves, I mean, remember when they were talking about the sorting hat and how he wished that it could have been done uh, in private, he didn't want it out in the open because it scared him. You know, like, what if he they found out that he really doesn't belong here, that he needs to get back on the train? A lot of those things are what I pretty much wrote down. Um, and I could have gone into even great detail when I write up, later on when I'm supposed to write up the theme of the story. Um, this will actually help me to do to do that. So let me get on with the story. Sorry about the phone call. That was my husband's phone. He's also working from home. Um, and my dog, too. You probably hear him in the background sometime, if you haven't already. Um, let's go. Chapter 13. Nicholas Femmels. Demeldorf was had convinced Harry not to go back, to go looking for the mirror of Ezel. Again, and for the rest of Christmas holidays, the invisible cloak stayed folded at the bottom of his trunk. Harry wished he could forget what he had seen in the mirror as easily, but he couldn't. He started having nightmares. Over and over again, he dreamed about his parents disappearing in a flash of green light. While a high voice uh, chuckled with laughter. You see, Dumbledore was right. That mirror could drive you mad, said Ron when Harry told him about the, those dreams. Hermione had came back to the day before term started, took a different view of things. She was torn between horror at the idea of Harry being out of bed, roaming the school three nights in a row. If Flinch had caught you and, and disappointment that he hadn't at least found out who Nicholas Femmel was. They had almost given up hope of ever finding Femmel in the library books. 
even though Harry was still sure he'd read the read the name somewhere. One t- once term started, they were back to skimming through books for 10 minutes during their breaks. Harry had even less time since the other two because cribbage practice had started again. Wood was working the team harder than ever. Even the endless rain had been, had been replaced has replaced the snow, couldn't dampen his spirits. The Weasleys complained that Wood was becoming a tyrant, a fanatic, but Harry was on Wood's side. If they were, um, if they won their next match, again, hopefully Puff, they would overcome Slytherin in the house championships for the first time in seven years. Quite, uh, quite apart from wanting to win, Harry found that he had fewer nightmares when he was tired out after training. Then during one particular wet and muddy practice session, Wood gave the team a bit of bad news. He had just gotten very angry with the Weasleys, who kept dive-bombing each other and pretending to um, to fall off their brooms. Will you stop messing around, he yelled. That's exactly the sort of thing we'll lose. They'll lose us the match. Snape's refereeing this time, and he's he'll be looking for any excuse to knock points off a of Gryffindor. George Weasley really did fall off his broom at those words. Snape's refereeing? He spl- sputtered through the mouthful of mud. When's he ever refereed a uh, cribbage match? He's not going to be fair if you might he, um, if we might overtake Smitheran. The rest of the team uh, landed next to George in complaint to, to complain too. It's not my fault, said uh, Wood. We just got to make sure we play a clean game. So Snape hasn't got an excuse to pick on us. Which was all very well, though, Harry. But he had another uh, reason for not wanting Snipe near him while he was playing cribbage. The rest of the team hung back to talk to one another, as usual, at the end of the practice. But Harry had headed straight back to Gryffindor common room, where he found Ray, uh, Ron and um, Hermione playing chess. Chess was the only thing Hermione ever lost at, something Harry and Ron thought was very good for her. Don't talk to me for a moment, said Ron when Harry sat down next to him. I need to concentrate. He caught sight of Harry's face. What's the matter with you? You look terrible. Speaking quietly so that no one else would hear, Harry told the other two about Snape's sudden uh, sinister desire to be a uh, Krivich referee. Don't play, said Hermione at once. Say you're, say you're ill, said Ron. Pretend to break your leg, Hermione suggested. Really? Break your leg? said Ron. I can't, said Harry. There isn't a reason, reason or reserve seeker. If I back out, Gryffindor can't play at all. At that moment, uh, Neville toppled into the common room. How had he managed to climb through the porthole was anybody's guess because his legs had been uh, stuck together with what they had recognized at once as the lead, leg locker curse. He must have had to bunny hop all the way to uh, Gryffindor's tower. Everyone fell over laughing except Her- Hermione, who le- leaped up and performed the counter curse. Neville's legs sprung apart, and he got to his feet trembling. <clears throat> what happened? Hermione asked him, uh, le- uh, leading him over to sit near Harry and Ryan. Malfry, said Neville shakenly. I met him outside the library. He said he'd been looking for someone to practice that on. Go to Professor McGonagall, um, Hermione urged Neville. Re- um, report him. Neville shook his head. I don't want any more trouble, he mumbled. You've got to stand up to him, Neville, said Ron. We're used to walking out there. He's used to walking all over people, but there's no reason to lie down in front of him and take it um, in earnest. There's no need to tell me I'm not brave enough to be in Gryffindor's. Malfrey's already done that, Neville choked out. 
Harry felt in his pocket of robes and pulled out a chocolate frog, the very last one from the box. Hermione had given him for Christmas. He gave it to Neville, who looked as though he might cry. You're worth 12 of Malfoy, Harry said. The sorting hat chose you for Gryffindor, didn't it? And where's Malfoy? He's in stinking Slytherin. Neville's lip, lips twitched in the weak smile as he unwrapped the frog. Thanks, Harry. I think I'll go to bed. Did you want the card? You collect them, don't you? As Neville walked away, Harry looked at the famous wheeze, uh, wizard card. Dumbledore again, he said. He was the first one I ever... He gasped. He stared at the back of the card. Then he looked up at Ron and Hermione. I found him, he whispered. I found Fennel. I told you I'd read the name. I read the name somewhere before. I read it on the training, uh, on the train coming here. Listen to this. Dumbledore is particularly famous for his defeat of the wizard um, Gryffindor. Uh, Geller Ward in 1945 for the discovery of the 12th uses of dragon's blood and his work on the um, um, academy with his partner Nicholas Femmel. Hermione jumped to her feet. He, she hadn't looked so excited since they'd gotten back to their mark, gotten back the marks from their very first piece of homework. Stay there, she said, and she sprinted up the stairs to the girls' dormitory. Harry and Ron barely had time to change um, mystif mystified looks before she dashed back with an enormous old book to her in her arms. I never thought to look in here, she whispered excitedly. I got this out of the library weeks ago for a bit of light reading. Light, said Ron. But Hermione told him to be quiet until she'd looked something up and started flickering frantically through the pages, muttering to herself. At last, she found what she was looking for. I knew it. I knew it. Are we allowed to speak yet? Ron grumbled. Hermione ignored him. Nicholas Femmel, she whispered dramatically, is the only known maker of the Sorcerer's Stone. This, that's where we get the name of the book from. Wow, it took, we're three-fourths of the way through, and we finally figured out the name of the book, how it got its name. Were you wondering that anyway through the book? I was. Uh, this didn't have quite the effect she expected. The what? said Harry and Ron. Oh, honestly, don't you two read? Look, read that. There. She pushed the book towards them, and Harry and Ron read. The ancient study of alchemy is concerned, concerned with making the sorcerer's stone, a legendary substance with astonishing powers. The stone will transform any metal into pure gold. It also produces the elixir of life, which will make the drinker immortal. There have been many reports that the Sorcerer's Stone over the centuries, but the only stone currently in existence belongs to Mr. Uh, Nicholas Femmel, who noted um, alchemist and opera lover. Mr. Femmel, who celebrates his sixth hundredth and uh, 67th birthday last year, enjoys a quiet life in Devon with his wife, uh, Pr Prinelle, 658. Wow, they're old. That's older than me. Not by much, though. See, says Hamrani, and when Harry and Ron had finished, the dog must be guarding Femmel's uh, sorcerer's stone. I bet he asked um, Dumbledore to keep it safe for him. Because they're friends, and they know one, they knew one another was after it. They knew someone was after it. That's why he wanted the stone moved out of the uh, Gringorts. A stone that makes gold and stops you from dying, says Harry. No wonder Snape's after it. Everyone would want it. 
and no wonder we can't find fennel in the study of the recent uh, developments in wizardry, said Ron. He's not exactly recent. It's hit, uh, if he's 675 years, is he? The next morning, in the defense against the dark arts, while copying down different ways of testing um, werewolf bites, of treating werewolf bites, Harry and Ron were still discuss, uh, discussing what they'd do with the sorcerer's stone if they had one. It wasn't until Ron said he'd buy his own uh, Quidditch team that Harry remember, remembered about Snape and the coming match. I'm going to play, he told Ron and Harmony. If I don't, all the Slytherins will think I'm just too scared to face Snape. I'll show them. I'll really, I'll really wipe their smiles off their faces if we win. Just as long as we're not wiping uh, you off the field, said Hermione. As the match drew clear, uh, nearer, however, Harry became more and more nervous. Whatever he told Ron and whatever he told Ron and Her Hermione, the rest of the team wasn't too calm either. The idea of overtaking Slytherin in the house championship was wonderful. No one had done it for seven years, but would they be allowed to with such a um, blissed referee, bias referee? Harry didn't know whether he was imagining it or not, but he seemed to be keep running into Snape whenever he went, wherever he went. At times, he even wondered whether Snape was following him, trying to catch him on his own. Potion lessons were... Uh, turning into sort of weekly torture. Snape was so horrible to Harry. Could Snape possibly know they found out about the Sorcerer's Stone? Harry didn't see how he could, yet he sometimes had the horrible feeling that Snape could read and could read minds. Harry knew when, when they wished him good luck outside the locker rooms the next afternoon that Ron and Hermione were wondering whether they'd ever see him alive again. This wasn't what you'd call comforting. Harry hardly heard a word of the uh, Woods pep talk as he pulled on his uh, Kovich robes and picked up his Nemesis 2000. Ron and Hermione, meanwhile, had found a place in the stands next to Neville, who couldn't understand why they looked so grim and, wor and worried or why they had both bought, brought their wands to the, to the match. Little did Harry know that Ron and Hermione had been secretly pra pra practicing the leg lock curse. They've gotten the idea from Malfrey using it on Neville, and already, and were ready to use it on Snape if he showed any signs of wanting to hurt Harry. Now, don't forget, it's locomotion mortis. Mortis, Hermione muttered as Ron slipped his wand up his sleeve. I know, Ron snapped. Don't nag. Back in the locker room, Wood had taken Harry aside. Don't want to pressure you, Potter, but if we ever need any an early capture um, of this niche, it's now. Finish the game before Snape can favor um, Puff and Puff too much. The whole school's out there said Fred Weasley, peering out of the door. Even blim blimey, Dumbledore's come to watch. Harry's heart did a somersault. Dumbledore, he said, dashing to the door to make sure. Fred was right. There was no mistaking that silver head. Harry could have laughed out loud with relief. He was safe. There was simply no way that Snipe would Snape would dare to try to hurt him if Dumbledore was watching. Perhaps there was why Snape was wanting, was looking so angry as the teams marched onto the field. Something that Ron noticed too. I've never seen Snape look so mean, he told Hermione. Look, they're off. Ouch! Someone had poked Ron in the back of the head. It was Malfoy. Oh, sorry, Wesley. Didn't see you there. Malfoy grinned bare, uh, broadly at Crab and Goyle. Wonder how long Potter's going to stay out on his broom this time. Anyone, anyone wants, 
want wants to bet want to bet how about you wesley ron didn't answer snape had just awarded um, ha- um hoof and puff a penalty because uh george wesley had hit the blunder at him hermione who had uh, all her fingers crossed in her lap was um squinting fix- fixedly at harry who was circling the game like a hawk looking for the snitch you know how I think they chose people for the Gryffindor team, said Malfoy loudly a few moments later, as Snape awarded Hufflepuff another penalty for no reason at all. It's people they feel sorry for. See, there's Potter, who's got no parents. Then there's the Weasleys, who's got no money. You should be one. You should be on the team, uh, Longbottom. You've got no brains. Neville went bright red, but turned in his seat to face Malfrey. I'm worth 12 of you, Malfrey, he stammered. Malfrey, um, Crab, and Doyle howled with laughter, but Ron, still not daring to take his eyes off the game, said, You tell him, Neville. Longbottom, if brains are gold, you'd be poorer than Wesley, and that's saying something. Ron's nerves were already stretched to the breaking point with anxiety about Harry. I'm warning you, Moffrey. One more word. Ron, said Hermione suddenly. Harry! What? Where? Harry had suddenly gone into a spectacular dive, with um, which drew gasps and cheers from the crowd. Hermione stood up, her crossed fingers in her mouth. Um, in her mouth as Harry sneaked towards the ground like a um, bullet. You're in luck, Wesley. Potter's obviously spotted some money on the ground, said Malfrey. Ron snapped before Malfrey uh, knew what was happening. Ron was on top of him, wrestling him to the ground. Neville hesitated, then climbed over the back of his seat to help. Come on, Harry, Hermione screamed, leaping into her seat. At, to watch as Harry sped straight to uh, at Snape. She didn't even notice Malfoy and Ron rolling around under her seat uh, or the scuffle, the yelps coming from the whirl of fists that was Neville, Grab, Crab, and Goyle. Up in the air, Snape turned on his broomsticks just in time to see something